Welcome to the Dashboard Effect. I'm Brick Thompson. And I'm Landon Oaks. Hey, Landon, we wanted to talk a little bit about access to data. Um, often when we're working with a client, um, a business person, they'll have requirements or, or wonder about how do we make sure only the people that we want to see the data are able to see the data. And there's a lot of technical stuff that happens behind the scenes to make that happen. But I thought we'd talk at least first about sort of what are the what are the business considerations there and how should a non-technical person think about how to set that up? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, you know, one of the, the first critical things um, that you need to start with is, you know, what are my different groups or roles um, and what should they see, right? Like what kind of data should my project managers see what shouldn't they um, is a great place to start. Yeah, so role, so roles is a – and, in fact, you'll hear a term role-based security. It's related role-based access control that um, Azure uses to um, talk about who has access to what uh, various services in Azure. But role-based security is sort of a play on row-based security. We'll talk a little bit about that. But, yeah, you can think about, okay, let's say that I've got a report for district managers to see how their stores are doing. Do I want them all to see all mm -hmm. the district reports, or do I want them to be filtered down so they're only seeing data for their districts? Same with store managers. You might have stores within – a district, maybe you want the store manager to only see their district yep. or their store data. You might have some reports, though, where you want them to see stacked ranking of the different stores so they see how they're doing. So there can be various permutations on that, and uh, it can get a little complicated. Um, I think one of the easiest ways to help the business person to think about it, the non-technical person, stakeholder, think about it is think in terms of hierarchies. You know, you might say, okay, the CFO sees everything or COO sees everything, no matter what. Um, uh, but then as you start drilling down into the hierarchy of the different organizations or, or mm -hmm. different uh, departments within an organization and the different levels within those, how should they see the data? And yeah, once you can yeah. define that, it's important to define that right because redoing that can be a pain. <laughs> but yeah. once you can define that, then actually the technical implementation is often quite straightforward. Yeah, yeah. There's there's some work that goes in behind the scenes, but that is sometimes the most challenging piece is figuring out what these rules should be, um, and sometimes can take more time than actually implementing it on the on the technical side for sure. Yeah, often there's uh, existing hierarchies, but when you get into thinking about who actually gets access to data, sometimes those need to change a little bit. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah, you're gonna always have those outliers here and there. Yeah. So, well, let's let's talk at least high level technical about, you know, how do we do this? Because I, I was talking to a client um, last week and they, they had questions about this. So it was a bit of a mystery, like, all right, well, how do you make sure do you assign by person? How, you know, what acts, what data they're allowed to see? Um, so maybe we could talk a little bit about sort of how that's set up typically, um, and, and how we make sure that only the right people with the right attributes or the right memberships in certain groups in the hierarchy get access to, to the data you want them to. Yeah, definitely. So I think, you know, starting from the most critical piece is we need to have a way to know that, you know, Bob is a store manager in Western Colorado, right? Um, so we have to have that linkage somehow. Um, and what we've found a lot of times your ERP system or your whatever system you might be using to track this stuff has that. It'll have the attributes for the yeah. person. Yeah, you, you, know, you might assign Bob to this store in your system, and that's great. That's exactly what we need. Um, sometimes they, that doesn't exist, right? So, you know, there's other options you can take, like Excel. We, it's not my favorite, not our favorite at Blue Margins yeah. route because what we've seen is it's hard to manage that. Um, it's for your ERP, you're in there every day. You're working on it. Uh, it's easy, and that's part of your business flow usually. If it's separate in an Excel sheet, it's easy to forget about Doesn't it, get put mistakes in there. Yeah, and you'll, you'll find yourself forgetting to, to do that. Yeah, if it's in your ERP or maybe you have a separate HR system where you've got attributes like what is the specific role like manager and what district and 
and, and various <clears> things <throat> like that, it's definitely easier. Yeah. You can handle it. I mean, Excel is sort of worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can also handle it through security groups. So if you're in the Microsoft world, you yeah. may have heard of, you know, uh, AD, um, Active Directory groups, um, now called Entra in the Azure world. Um, but you can assign people to manager groups or to – and you can have manager groups within – other groups like district groups and that type of thing. So you can use a high, you can do a hierarchy there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And you know, that's better than Excel because you've got sort of a, a trusted uh, single source of truth there, whereas Excel can go, go bad on you. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously best is to get it out of the source systems if you can get it. If possible. Yeah. That's always going to be your most reliable way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You can end up with situations, though, where it just doesn't work out of the source system. Mm-hmm. I yep, mean, I, we've I, seen it. I can think of use cases where someone changed positions, but you still wanted them to have access to the old yeah, stuff. And yeah. So you have to deal with that through different ways. Regardless, basically what you're doing is once you know what group should have access to what data, then behind the scenes, you can filter mm-hmm. the data so that um, users only – that the only data that shows up on the reports they're looking is from rows that they're allowed to have access to, rows in the database tables. Well, in this case, in our case, you'd have a data lake, but you would have views that are sort of like old tables where you've got rows. Um, so just a little behind the scenes, that's how it works is you set up these filters that are triggered based on that. Yeah, definitely. Um, Yeah, it kind of just checks, you know, who's logging in, who's coming in here to see this. And we can see that, luckily. Um, And so, like, with your groups, for instance, you know, it can say, okay, Bob logged in. I can go see that he is as part of the uh, Western Colorado group. Um, And so it will – so we can just create that rule to quickly filter the data. Um, And it seems to work well, especially for, like, those types of rules where it might be location-based, where it's easy to – assign people um, to these groups and they don't change every day, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, and if it's coming out of an ERP system, so you have an individual that has attributes assigned to them like region and mm-hmm. like title or position that they're in, you can do those filters off of multiple attributes as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can really go crazy with it. You want to be careful not to go crazy with it because <laughs> maintaining it can be a pain. Um, you want to be careful not to expose data that you didn't mean to to the wrong person. Um, And so, you know, testing and and planning is really important with that. But it's pretty straightforward, actually. Yeah. Not as much of a mystery as it might seem. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's always doable. And to your point of exposing data that you might not want to, it is always good to find, you know, a small test group when you first do this. Yeah. You know, find somebody you trust. <laughs> right, right, of course. <laughs> let's, let's put them through the test that way. If something happens, you know, that we're fine. Yeah, and, and, you know, usually it's not a case of, oh, no, we exposed some confidential data. That can be the case. But usually it's a case of uh, uh, you're just you're just sort of, cluttering someone's view with data exactly. that's yeah. not relevant to them. And, you know, our, our, our goal in BI reporting is always have the simplest view possible to drive the decisions and to give the information mm-hmm. um, that yep. we want to. Yep. All right. Anything else to add on that? No, I don't think so. Okay. We'll wrap it up. Thanks, Landon. All right. Thank you. Thank you.